Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue, and I'm bringing you all this video of me playing board games. This will be in the Cool Blue and Cardboard series. Um, as we can see here, I have set up Final Girl. Uh, if you have not checked out the other videos, I have three videos. This is the third video, uh, the actual playthrough. Video number one is me reviewing and kind of giving some commentary on the game. Video number two is me actually setting up this scenario that we have in front of us. And then video number three, which is this one, is me playing through. So I'll do a full playthrough, see how I do. Uh, the current setup, for those who want to know, if I zoom out a little bit so you can see a little bit more of the boards, um, the current setup has me here to where I have uh, Sacred Groves, and I'm playing as Adelaide, so I have my health set up over here, and I have my thing set up over here. This is the setup card that we have, which is uh, Dueling Tour Guides, and those are my starting items. My starting event was Hollow Grounds, which is actually very fortunate, uh, so I have a little bit of reprise at the beginning. Um, basically gives me some... Um, it gives me a benefit if I end my turn in this space specifically. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of what we're looking at at this current point in time. I'm going against the birds on Sacred Groves. Um, I've never played Sacred Groves before. I've never played with Adelaide as a character before. Um, but I have played the birds many a times. And I have an idea of how I'm going to try to win against the birds. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to beat these birds. I've played them four times. I've lost. Sorry, I played them three times. I've lost all three times. So hopefully fourth time's a charm, y'all. So I have my starting hand of cards over here with the two walks, two focuses, weak attack, and short rest. And uh, for those who don't know, as far as the birds, let me give you a quick tour of those, in just in case you didn't see the previous video. The birds, uh, there is no villain for the birds. They are all minions, essentially. Uh, the birds will attack during the birds or during the killer phase. The birds will attack in my spot, and the birds will also attack if there's three birds in a spot. Otherwise, the birds will not activate and will not attack. Um, the birds will also spawn at a uh, pretty fast clip. Uh, the birds don't, do not actually move, but anytime there's a movement requirement for the villain, instead of moving, what's going to happen is the birds will spawn. And they'll spawn based on the spawn birds card, which I find is, is one of my favorite mechanics about the birds. Like, as much as I hate the birds because I keep kicking my butt, um, I do like this mechanic a lot. Which, uh, for spawn birds, essentially what you do is you roll two... Oh, we can't read that. Uh, you essentially roll two dice... And after you roll the two dice, uh, how about down here? Sure. Uh, you roll two dice, and after you roll the two dice, uh, one dice will count as how many birds are spawned. The other one counts as where they spawn. And uh, the where they spawn section is there. And this is anytime I see a boot symbol or the bird foot symbol. Uh, and that's what spawns the birds. So there's going to be a lot of birds spawning. And uh, if there's ever needs to be three birds in one spot, because a, loca a location can only hold three birds, if there ever needs to be a fourth bird placed in that spot, that bird will instead spawn in the like in the overflow, an adjacent spot. And that can, of course, chain to become worse and worse and worse as we go along. So I enjoy that mechanic because it keeps the random in the game, and it's a little bit more random without, uh, you know, just kind of brutally trying to smack in the face too much. Um, but at any rate, this is the setup that we have on the board. Um, actually, let me do, um, let me do this. Because I, I might need this. But I just wanted to set this up to fill out that space because there's nothing over there. <laughs> there we go. That's the game we're playing. That, that, looks, that looks nice. It's nice and nice and cool. All I need now is like a little coffee cup and a plant. No, <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, cool. So everything's not as uh, not all the even, but this is mainly because I want to facilitate being able to zoom in and see the main stuff here. So we're gonna go ahead and start. Uh, I have, like I said, already set the board. Everything's already set. I got the birds. I know what items I see in the um, locations. And I know what I'm going to do. Or at least I think I know what I'm going to do. So let's start the game. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play my first card. Which uh, I'm playing Adelaide. And there's two ways for me to reduce horror. I, I like to try to focus on reducing the horror as much as possible. So part of me wants to try to get as much time as possible so I can get Distraction. Uh, distraction is a card that I do not have yet. But I can purchase later. And with Distraction it allows me to, if I get two successful rolls, reduce the horror by two and get two time. Uh, that's pretty nice to try to focus on while I have a little bit of time, but I don't have a ton of time because the birds are, the birds are birds, you know, the, the bird, the birds are burden. <laughs> the bird are, the birds are a burden. Haha, <laughs> there you go. So I'm going to play this walk and it's going to have me roll two dice. Uh, let me see, I need a dice box here. I will use the top from another game. I'll roll two dice and see what I get. So I got one partial success and one failure. So with that partial success and failure, I can discard two cards right now to make that successful. I only have five cards in my hand right now. So uh, I think I think I will because I really need to not have failures this early. Um, 
I get to move one. Oof, that sucks. Uh, I get to move one space, so I'm gonna discard a short rest and a focus. So I'm discarding short rest and focus. I'm putting in my played area right here. It's gonna get crowded pretty fast, but I'll put them right there. And I get to walk, which is uh, I get I have to reduce my time by one. So I have to reduce my time by one, and I get to oh, sorry, reduce my time by one, and I get to move up to one space. So my time's going down from six to five, and then I move one space, which I'm stuck in a corner, so I got to move here where the birds are. The birds are. Uh, I think I want to try to walk again. Although part of me wants to try to attack that bird, but if I can get two, then I can do one, two. Uh, I kind of want to go where all those people are. Because then I can uh, search. They're in the Lost and Found. And in the Lost and Found, there's an item called the Old Rifle. And the Old Rifle, let's see. This is the item that I'm after. This item is in the uh, Lost and Found. And the Old Rifle, if you look at it on the sheet up here, it is... Oh, uh oh There we go. So the Old Rifle says, uh, uh, can only modify a, the weak attack card uh, if I'm at a Sacred Ground plus two to the maximum range. So that's actually pretty nice because I can do some pretty cool setup with the plan being because uh, the way the board came out with the setup is that we ended up in a situation to where the um, Sacred Groves, which is here, uh, ended up being a blessed space or hollowed ground. So if I end my turn there, I get plus two time. So if I can get that rifle now and then just hang out in the Sacred Groves and just kind of shoot a few birds when I need to or just kind of in passing uh, shoot a few birds, that will be nice. So I think I think I want to try to go for that. So knowing that, I'm going to try to walk again. So I'm going to play a walk, roll my two dice. <clears throat> and, ooh, that's not good. Uh, two partial successes. Like I said, this is a dice game. So I can get rid of my weak attack and focus to move one space. Or alternatively, I can just lose one health, lose two time, and then move one space anyway. Um, I like the idea of moving. The problem is I don't want to get rid of my weak attack because I want to try to attack the birds. Uh, and also if I, well, well I, judging by how the roll went, I'm not going to get the uh, the gun anyway. I'm, I'm not going to get the old rifle at this time anyway. So really sucks to do this, but I think I am going to discard two cards. This game gives me all the hard decisions. Actually, let me scoot this up because I'd rather have us see these. So I'm discarding two time, and now that I discarded two time, I'm gonna go ahead, or sorry, two cards. I'm going to um, lose one time, so I'm down from five to four, and I get to move one space. So now the question is, do I wanna move where the person is, or do I wanna move where the bird is? I think I wanna move where the bird is, because that's gonna give me more time. They're gonna attack me anyway, so it's fine. And that's it, I have no more cards to play. I'm gonna end my turn there. Uh, now we go to the planning phase, which we'll zoom out here. And in the planning phase, um, I oh, in this box I'm using, by the way, it's another game that I'll do a review on so soon called Marquee. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty fun game. I like it. But this is the box I'm using, just in case you see it on the side. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to take my time. Or I've ended my turn here on the hollow ground. So that's going to give me this effect, which is two extra time. So my time goes from four to, two, to six. And now that I've done that, I have six dollars to spend on these cards down here. So I kind of want to do Atonement, because I, I feel like doing Atonement would be nice. So getting one of these, which costs two, but also want to get a uh, guard. So um, let's see. Okay, so I definitely need to move. So I'm going to get a Sprint for $2. One, two. <clears throat> and then I want to do a Search. So I'll take a Search for $2. One, two. And then finally, uh, I think at this point, I, I might just try to eat that first damage I take, because I am going to take damage. Um, and I have a little bit of health to play around with. Not too much, but I have a little bit of health to play around with. So I'm going to take, um, uh, I'm going to take the, uh, I feel like, I feel like that's a bad idea. Mm. Cause the, the goal is to have as much time as possible so I can next turn get distraction, which is nice. So I can reduce the horror level and then, uh, maybe build up a little bit more money. So I'm going to take these two close calls. So all I can do is sprint and search. I'm going to take damage from the birds and hopefully the birds aren't going to do, aren't going to hurt me too much but uh, we'll see all right now that all this is done so i play this walk so now at the end of my purchase uh what's going to happen is my time is going to reset all these cards that were played last turn are now available for me to take i cannot take them right now but these are all the zeros that i played 
So next time around, they go back to my hand. I have a hand limit of 10. I only have four cards in my hand, so I'm fine for now. So now we move on to the next part. And the next part is the killer phase. So the killer phase is going to reveal, or sorry, first they're gonna do this, which uh, for them, let me zoom back in here because we don't need to see everything. For the killer, or the birds, killer birds, uh, they're going to do, they're going to swing at whatever's in their space, where they activate, and then they're going to spawn birds. So in this case, birds will only activate where I am, so that only that one's going to attack. All the other birds are not going to do anything. Uh, well, sorry, this this bird, this bird uh, where the three birds are going to also swing and attack, but there's nobody for them to attack, so they're going to do nothing. So this bird's going to hit me for one, and I have nothing to block it, so I just lose one health. So I go down from six to five. And then next, uh, we're going to draw the, oh, sorry, we're going to spawn birds right there. So I'm going to roll two dice again. And one and one, that's pretty good. All right, one is where they spawn at, and the other one is how many birds spawn. So in this case, uh, one and one is actually pretty good. So I spawn, I distribute to any space one bird. So I can put uh, one bird in any space. Uh, part of me wants to put them where I am. But the other part of me doesn't, because then it becomes a problem later on. <clears throat> so I don't want to put them where I'm going, or where I might end up. So I'm, I'm going to put this, uh, I'm going to put that one bird anywhere I want to be over here. So that's still problematic, because I need to work on that eventually. But, you know, just kind of slow walking it for now. And now that we've done that, we do a tear card. And this one, ah, <laughs> ah, bird wall. <laughs> so bird wall is going to come out which is a uh, minor dark power for the birds. And basically, uh, I cannot exit if there's a bird in an exit space. So if it, there's a bird in an exit space, I cannot use it to exit. Thankfully, this one is free of birds, and that's fine. But that means that um, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult. Now, one of the things I can use to deal with bird wall is aluminum bat, which is an item that exists in uh, Camp Happy Trails 2. But aluminum bat, which is uh, whenever I inflict damage to the killer with aluminum bat, I may immediately discard a minor dark power, including any health markers that remain on the card. That's great because I can, if I can get that bat, I can knock off the bird wall and it becomes a little bit less to, uh, of a nightmare to deal with. But I don't know if I'll do that because that's all the way in the welcome center and the welcome center is a little ways away. Uh, I guess I could sprint to the welcome center, but I'd rather go to the lost and found uh, so I can start rescuing people because um, this is one, two, three, four to there, and then one, oh, I'm here, sorry. One, two, three, four, five to there, or one, two, three, four, five. Man, that's, that's like a long run to get to the welcome center. So I don't think I need to get the um, bat right now, but I definitely need to stick with my original plan of doing lost and found so I can stay focused. So that's fine. So the birds got bird wall, they're not gonna attack, which is great. And now we move on to the next round. So next round happens, next round starts, and I got four cards to work with. I have a sprint, a search, and two close calls. I'm gonna go ahead and play the sprint first. And the sprint's gonna allow me to move depending on what my roll looks like. So here we are. And I got one success and one fail. I could try to spend a close call to reroll, but I, I wanna preserve my close calls for now. So. One success on the sprint will make will let me move two spaces, but I lose one time, so I lose one time. Can I move two spaces, which is perfect, because that's where I want to go. One, two. Gets right over there with the people. <clears throat> and then I'm going to play my search, which is my other card. And I really just need a search so I can get that old rifle, because that'll be great. So I'm rolling. One success and one not success. I'm going to go ahead and spend one of my close calls. The ability of close call is um, I get to, if I discard the card, I can reroll one dice, any one dice on my horror roll. If I discard two cards, or sorry, if I um, if I discard the card and spend two time, then I can reroll all the dice. I want one of those dice to stay where they are, so I'm just gonna discard that one card to reroll this. So I got one success so far, and I'm gonna roll this, and two successes. Perfect. All right, perfect. This is great. Things are going well. The question is, how can how can Cool Blue ruin this? <laughs> So with the search, with two successes, I get to take uh, the top two cards from the item deck and I get to keep one and place one, I'm oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I get to keep one and put the other one either face up on the deck or face down at the bottom. So I'll put that here and I lose one time uh, regardless of what I do. So 
I'm at here with the old rifle. I think we're kind of jet set on the old rifle, so I'll go ahead and just take that. And the two cards I got are the old rifle and energy drink. So once again, it's kind of very blue over here, but it's fine. Uh, just as long as it doesn't distract from the screen. Um, <clears throat> so the old rifle, we already talked about that I wanted that. The energy drink is uh, discard this during your action phase and choose one of the following. Three, time, or move one space. Eh. I, I, I don't think that's a card I need to ditch and throw at the bottom. But uh, so, so I'll keep it at the top of the deck because it's not awful. But it's also just not useful for me right now. So I'll take that old rifle since I was kind of heart set on that. And uh, it's perfect because I'll be getting my uh, weak attack back next round. So old rifle is back, on, or sorry, that's back on the top. Old rifle is an item that has two hand spaces. So it's two hands there. So it's going to go over here and take up all my hand space. I have a max hand space of two. So that's unfortunate. Uh, but during my planning phase, I can unequip and re-equip stuff. So it's fine for now. Now I have an old rifle. And uh, I can only shoot the old rifle with weak attacks. And I have no weak attacks, so it doesn't matter. But I got one close call left. So now that's done, I'm going to end my turn there. <clears throat> and I'm going to move over to the planning phase. And for the planning phase, um, I have four time. So, um, with four time, uh, oh, first and foremost, I'm going to get all my zeros back. Because they cost zero time. So I'll gladly take all those back, every single one of them. And then uh, I have my close calls already in my hand. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, seven cards. So now I have four time to spend. I think I need to do that distraction I want to do. I also want to do improvise. Actually, let, let, me, let me take improvise first. So improvise is nice because it gives me... Well, actually, okay. Yeah, I'll do improvise now. Uh, improvise is going to give me a... Uh, until the... Oh, actually, oh, no. So I'm waste. I'm gonna waste time. Ah, <clears throat> okay. Okay. All right. All right. Here's the plan. Let me. Let me do this. Let me take a. Uh, this is a difficult part because like I kind of want all these cards. Getting a retaliate early on is not awful. Um. What if I got improvised now? Well, the problem with getting improvised now is that I'm gonna lose one time because there's no ones left. So, uh, alternatively, I can just take Atonement right now, and then get the other Sprint, or I can do Search, because all I got now is Walks, and Walks are not going to take me very far. Uh, I would need a really good roll with Walks to actually move the uh, people that I'm at to the exit. Uh, as a side note, only two people will follow you, by the way. Only two people will follow you, and typically they will not follow you into the killer space. There's no killers here, only, only uh, minions. But that is the thing to note and keep in mind. <clears throat> oh, so many decisions. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do. Or I took an atonement, so I'm down to two time. So I took an atonement, and I think part of me wants to be safe and take the guard, because I can also guard for villain or for uh, victims. Normally in the game, uh, when a when an enemy is attacking a victim. Uh, you will not be able to block for that victim, but in this game, because the birds are birds, um, I can use guards, which are reactionary cards, or retaliate, which are reactionary cards. I can use them on, uh, or when a victim's being attacked. Otherwise, the villain slash enemy always attacks victims first that are in my space, then they'll attack me, so they can like, try to stab the person in front of me, it's like, haha, look at the thing, look at the horror. Uh, but in this situation, I think, uh, I, I don't want to play too safe, but also don't want to play too loose and dangerous. So I'm trying to I'm trying to debate if I want sprint search, the other atonement or guard. I think I'll take the. See if I have the search already. It's gonna take me a while to get over there to the bat, which the bat would be nice to grab. Um, let's see if I do the sprint, I can do one, two, three, four, five. I can possibly get that if I get really good rolls, which I can't promise. And uh, then I'll have to punch that bird, which I could do. Uh, okay, all right, yeah, we'll do the sprint. <clears throat> all right, we're gonna keep moving because movement is good. We wanna keep active and keep going. All right, cool. So now we've made our decision. Uh, oh, first thing we do is we uh, reduce this down to zero because I spent all my time. And this goes back to six to reset. All these cards are now available for purchase later on. And now we zoom back into the action. 
So for here, uh, the birds are going to do their thing. So the birds are going to swing where they are, which there's no birds in this space. There's three birds there, and there's nothing for them to attack. So no attack happens. Now we're going to spawn birds, rolling two dice. So two dice rolling. A one and a four, that's not as great. Uh, so I can either do, I can spawn one bird uh, in the nearest item space. Oh no, that's the nearest exit. So I can spawn one bird at the nearest exit, or I can spawn four birds distributed anywhere in any spaces. Well, the nearest exit is where I'm going, so I don't, I don't think it's awful to spawn that one bird, because like I like the idea of spawning just one bird there. So I'm going to put one bird over here, like so. And now that we've done that, that's a bird spawning. We're going to go ahead and move over to the tear card. And this tear card is going to be the birds are attacking. So they're going to attack in your space in all spaces where birds outnumber the victims, which currently is nowhere. And then uh, if no attacks occur, then spawn birds again and increase bloodlust. That's not good. So we're going to spawn birds first. that's the worst oh no oh. wait can i reroll that can i force that to reroll play after any horror roll to reroll one dice or pay two times to reroll all your dice okay let me let me let me check does that count as a horror roll it says spawn birds roll two dice no it does not count as a horror roll shoot darn darn it that's not good we're spawning six birds and we're spawning six birds where i am yeah, six birds in my space. So there's going to be three birds here. And three birds either here or here. I'd rather do three birds here because uh, there, there's some um, there's there's some events that show up that basically get worse depending on how many people are in the sacred grounds, which are these ones. So if that bird kills that person, then I'll be great. I mean, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Listen to me saying if that person dies, I'll be great. Um, it won't be great, but it'll also be nice because then it's a little bit low. Okay. I, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop saying words. Uh, at any rate, I can like run this way and go do stuff. So uh, now that we've done that, um, we're gonna increase the bloodlust by one for the birds, which is gonna spawn an event, and that new event is gonna come out, and it's going to be probably nothing good. It's gonna be fire and brimstone. Uh, roll a dice and place a fire and brimstone token. Uh, each victim in that space counts as two victims when calculating for uh, divine wrath increases. Oh, uh, okay. So let's roll a dice. So we're rolling a die. And we rolled a six again. Man, all these sixes. And that's the card that we're playing. So with a six, we're going to spawn on the holy grounds. Or holy groves. Oh, that's where that's where our other thing is. Oh no. Well, don't bring victims there. <laughs> Alright, so now we have two events in play. One is good, one is meh. And, uh, yep, that's the way of the game, y'all. All right, so at least nobody died, but we're, we're getting to a perilous situation here. This is, this is starting to shape up to be really bad. Um, if I had the aluminum bat, that'd be great, but I don't, because then I can just swing at the bird right now. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get out of here, because I want to... If I can get to the sacred or the holy grounds, then my rifle my rifle's range will increase by two. So the rifle's range is one to two. Uh, let me bring it over here. My rifle's range is one to two. And uh, when I attack, I have to use the weak attack to attack with it. So my rifle range being one to two is nice because that means I can attack to adjacent spaces or one space further. If I shoot my rifle on the holy grounds, then I can reach all the way to the exit because that's gonna be one, two, three. Oh, actually that's one, two. Oh, I can reach it anyway. Um, so that's kind of nice. The issue is I only have one weak attack, and the weak attack, if I miss weak attack, then I will end my turn immediately. I got one close call to reroll all my dice, so got a little bit to manage here. I really want to swing at the birds in my current spot with the rifle. And the rifle's only ability is that it lets me do a ranged weak attack, which is not the greatest. So that kind of sucks. Did I take a search? I did not take a search. Shoot. It would be nice to take a search. <laughs> uh, huh. Alright, this is the difficult part because I don't know which one makes sense to do right now. 
So I'm gonna start with a sprint. And depending on where this goes determines where I go and me and the victims. So I'm gonna roll my two dice because the horror level is on two. Oh, did anybody die? Nobody died yet, right? Yeah, nobody died yet. Okay, so we're gonna roll uh, two partial successes. Uh, with those two partial successes, I think I'm gonna go ahead and spend a close call and re-roll one of them. Because if I can just get one partial success, I can make that work. Or, or alternatively, Let's see, if I get rid of the short rest and get rid of one of the walks and then I get rid of the close call. No, I need Holmes and close call. And then I get rid of the, no, yeah, yeah. Well, I can get rid of the two focuses, which sucks. So I get rid of four cards. That lets me move the maximum of three spaces and lose one time, which that means I can do one, two, three. The problem with doing just two time or with a, sorry, with a two movement is I can do just one, two. And then I can kind of set myself up to shoot the bird and then walk over there afterwards. Actually, okay, okay, actually, I, I convinced myself. That's actually a better idea. Um, I'll get rid of a short rest and a focus to make that one success. So now I move, uh, lose one time and I move up to two spaces. So I can move up two spaces. I'll take two people with me. So one, two, and we're all going to go there, hang out with this bird. And now the problem is I, I definitely need to kill that bird over here without losing too much. And then I need to walk the victims over there so we can get out of here. Uh, if I don't, then this is going to be really bad, really fast. Or it's going to get worse, much faster. So next I'm going to do is I'm going to do a weak attack. And I got one reroll in me. So I got one weak attack. And let's see how it goes. Woo! Two successes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I'm going to shoot this bird with my weak attack because I'm using the old rifle here and my range is actually increased because I was on this barrel ground But I didn't need it, but I killed a bird put it on the bird wall and That that was great. I feel I feel kind of sad for waste or for spending that roll on that But it's you know, it is what it is. I'll take the success when I can get it now the walk. Let's see if I can walk successfully so I'm gonna Roll these two dice Of course two partial successes. Uh, I got four cards in my hand I have half a mind to discard all four just to make it those spaces. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I'm, I'm going to discard all four of these cards, which sucks. I'm getting rid of the atonement, the close call and everything. But I'm discarding all four of those to walk two spaces with these victims. One, two. And then I will let them escape. So I'm going to escape this victim to give myself two time. Oh, there we go. Uh, one. Oh, sorry. I lose one time with that movement, by the way. So I'm down to four. I'm going to escape that victim to give me two time. So one, two. So I'm back to six. Then I'm going to escape this victim to give me uh, two more time. Um, part of me thinks I should do the horror because I feel like the horror is about to get really bad soon. Uh, I haven't seen any horror dropping cards and people have not died yet, but somebody will die. In, or two people will die in a second. Uh, whew. Yeah, I think it's better for me to go ahead and get the money now. So that way I can actually be useful. So it's going to get really bad really fast because uh, we're about to have at least two people die. We're going to have at least two people die, which means that the horror track is going to go from four to six, which is getting really close to being actually, no, okay, I, I can't, I can't risk it that much. I'm, I'm going to do this here to protect myself. So when those two people die, uh, then there's a chance all right, just in case three people die, then there's a chance that I can actually make it back and not not be too sad. I have no cards left, though, so that, that's what sucks about it. So now that we've done that, um, let's go ahead and zoom out and do our planning with my six time. Okay. So I think I want to do close call, sprints, um and distraction because i will need distraction i will definitely need distraction but close call and sprint are definitely needed so i can actually move this turn although i could just try to invest in distracting doing distraction twice which if i succeed in that then i basically spend one entire turn just getting the horror level down as much as i can which is going to be four spaces and then I set myself up for a turn afterwards. 
the problem with that is if I fail on the distraction rolls, then there's some really bad stuff that can happen. So, uh, and movement, moving is always good. I like, 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 uh, I, d I don't think I explained this fully, but, um, once I get my card full and I flip it over, then I get to spawn the special victims, which is one of the winning conditions versus the birds. Um, or if there's no more victims left on the board, as in they all, they've all been murdered. Um, oh, snap. I didn't do this. Sorry. Increase the, um, increase the divine wrath by one for all victims in those spaces. So one, two, I'm glad I caught that. So whenever divine wrath starts and I discard a random card, that's not good. I think double distraction. I'm liking double distraction, um, but I'm also liking taking uh, one of the attack cards so I can start killing more birds, and then um, just taking a taking a guard or an atonement because I, I do I do want to get that down a little. All right, I'm, I'm gonna do double distraction this round, and assuming I survive, we'll see how we'll see how things go. But I'm doing double distraction now. So I got double distraction, so that's all six of my time spent. So I'm resetting back to six. These cards are now unlocked. So I get my zeros, I'll put them down here to the side. And actually, uh, what's going on? I don't know how I ran out of space, but I did. Birds move. So my zeros will be down there. Atonements, focus, walk weak, uh, sprints, and those. All right, so all I'm doing this turn is distracting, and we'll see if that works out for me. Uh, bold move, we'll see how it works out for him. Okay, <clears throat> all right. So birds are going to attack. They're going to kill two people. One, two. So the first two victims of the game. Bloodless is going to go up. One, two. So horror is going to go up by one. I forgot about that. Um, Actually, no, I, I kind of planned for that, my bad. I, I, I thought it was going to go up per death, but it's not true. So Horror's going to go up by this, and Dark Power is going to be revealed. So we reveal the Dark Power for the birds, which, please don't be Burnado. Oh, it's even worse. They're just waiting to strike as the one. It says, during upkeep, if there are three birds in your space, raise the Horror by two. So that one is uh, kind of unoffensive, but it's a little annoying. And then also, uh, we're going to unleash Divine Wrath right now because we're on that track right there. So Unleash Divine Wrath is I'm going to discard one random action card, which is one of my distractions, which sucks. But hey, at least I had two of them. And, uh, you know, I've, I've definitely had worse. We'll see how the birds react in a second. So the birds are going to... Ah, no! <laughs> okay, so increase Divine Wrath by number of victims in Divine Spaces, or in Sacred Spaces. So two. One, two. Oh, yeah, just two. This one counts as double, but these are not those... Oh, just one. Sorry, my bad. Just one. Because it's only, that one died. Uh, oh, actually, hold on. Did it? Did something? Something triggered Divine Wrath, didn't it? No. Yeah, we, we, we did this right. Yeah. So that one said increase by <clears throat> number of victims in sacred spaces, which is just one, and then unleash Divine Wrath, which is I lose four times, so I go from six to two, and then afterwards uh, place two new victims on the Holy Groves, which is not good because that place is actually cursed right now. And then all victims adjacent to Holy Groves moves there, which is also even worse, because that means that we're going to increase Divine Wrath by eight if uh, we increase we uh, Divine Wrath strikes here. So this is not good. I need to rescue those victims immediately, <clears throat> which is not good because my next turn is going to be literally just standing there doing nothing. All right. This is not bad yet, but that is a ticking time bomb that is about to blow up. Like, almost immediately. Alright, and now we do upkeep. Uh, we panic victims. So, when we panic victims, what's going to happen is... Uh, we Sorry, this is during the panic victims phase before the upkeep. Uh, anybody who dies in a space with an enemy, they will run. And we roll the dice see where they run. So that one's going to run to one. And it's going to go over here which I guess is fine, and uh, that's it. Uh, upkeep phase, that's it. Uh, during upkeep phase, if I'm in a space with three birds, sorry, if there are three birds in your space, then double uh, double increase the horror, 
Okay, cool. Alright, well, we're looking okay so far, so I'm gonna go ahead and play that one card that I got, which is Distraction. That's all I got. And whatever I get is what I get. Alright, I got one success and a two. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. I got one success and a no success and a fail. So one success is going to reduce the horror level by one and give me one time. And that's all I got. That's my entire turn. So now I'm going to get all these zeros back. So I'm zooming out. So I got all my zeros back. So they're in my hand now. <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six. And I got three time to spend. Uh, it'll be nice if I left the other district. Well, actually, no one, because I will have no turn last turn. But I think it's time for me to do an atonement and definitely go for um, or, or I can start gearing up to fight the birds I cannot afford to retaliate which is one of the first attacks and the other attacks are four so I can't afford any of those um, I can try to do improvise to make my dice rolls a little bit better that uh, improvise makes my threes and fours successes automatically instead of um, sorry yeah threes and fours successes automatically so I have a higher chance of succeeding at all my uh, dice rolls. I think mission number one is to get those people out of that area because I really need them out of there. So it seems like it seems like I'm doing um, improvise so I can have uh, the best rolls possible. And that's all three of my time. So all my time is spent. And now we move on to the next round. Uh, oh, sorry, I lied. We don't move on to the next round. Sorry, now the birds are going to do things. Oh, actually, this is actually worse. Uh, so, attack, 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 and do nothing. That's not enough birds. And now we got a new terror card. Oh, we spawn birds. So I roll two dice. Did I spawn birds last time? I don't think I spawned birds last time. Alright, I will spawn two sets of birds, because I did not spawn birds last time. Oh, let me zoom in. Yeah, I forgot to spawn birds last time. So I'll spawn two sets of birds. So sets one will be two and four. Uh, so I'll spawn them first and then do the attack uh, calculation again. So two and four, which means I can do any single space four birds, or I can do uh, the nearest exit two birds. Uh, I don't like either of those. The nearest exit is where I am. And I can put two birds there, which means that nobody can escape because of bird wall. Or I can put four birds in any single space oh boy oh boy this is not good uh, it's getting worse and worse so I can um use my rifle to shoot birds from here so I'll do them over here since I, I, I'm just gonna kind of ignore this half of the board for a second uh, so I'm gonna spawn the birds here actually no, I'll spawn the birds here so I'm going to spawn four birds here. So it's going to be, this is going to be three birds, that's two. I got two more birds left. I can do one bird here, one bird there, which I will. One bird here, one bird there. That's about the best I got. All right, now we check for killing. Nobody dies. Uh, now we do the new bird spawn. This is for this round. And we got a four and a four. Ah, four birds uh, at the nearest exit anyway. Oh, no. So that's going to be three birds where I am. And then one bird overflows to where I choose, which I will choose. Uh, oh, there's, there's no choice. It's just this. This is the only place to go. Okay, cool. Well, it's not good. Uh, and that means I'm going to, we're going to raise the horror level by two. Uh, I don't have, a, I do not have a retaliate. I cannot afford it. So, uh, Fury of the Gods. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I think this game is now unwinnable. Fury of the Gods. First, we draw an event. And this event is going to be the gods hate failure. Whenever you completely fail a horror roll after conversions and rerolls, uh, sorry, after conversions and rerolls, if you completely fail, increase the divine wrath by one. Ugh, that's rough. All right. Uh, so we increase the divine wrath by number of victims at sacred spaces. So it's basically going to get maxed out because this is going to be one, then three, five, seven, nine. So it's going to max out. And then it says unleash divine wrath. It says decrease all, discard all action cards except atonement and decrease divine wrath by the number of cards discarded. Oh no. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh wow, that's oh these these become uh, available again. That's awful. Okay, and then increase by number of victims at sacred space. So it's gonna max out again. Wow. That's not good. I don't like that card at all. That's an awful card. Wow. Um, well, that's uh, that's the game. Now, now this kind of unfortunate. If you if you checked out the first video that I had, this kind of unfortunate bad things happen situation. This is fine. This is one of those. If I had planned better, because I had an atonement, and I was gonna do some reducing divine wrath, eventually. Um, this is just one of those like circumstantial things happen to where people spawned here and all of a sudden now I got a, a big problem to deal with. That's, that's just one of those like it's a part of the game like I get it. But um, Carnival of Blood though, mm, unexcusable, unexcusable. Like this this is playable, like this, I, I, can, I can manage this, like that's unfortunate. That now we're gonna max this out again. It says increase, div uh, increase divine wrath by number of victims at sacred spaces which is the same number as before. So yeah. Uh, yep, we're at 10 divine wrath. So my next turn is going to be absolutely nothing. So I have uh, six time to work with. I can buy some stuff. First and foremost, I'm going to buy two atonements because y'all know I need them. <laughs> and then I'm going to hopefully buy a search or sorry, sprint. Maybe I can use it. Maybe actually, let me, let me get two close calls. Oh, sorry. I didn't increase the horror. Uh, I increased the horror level by two. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Actually, hold on. Hold on. I'm gonna get a retaliate and an atonement. Because retaliate when the birds attack, I can attack them back and I might be able to kill them. Which would be uh, good. Actually, you know what? Screw it. I don't want atonement. I want two close call. I want one close call. Eh, no, I want atonement. Yeah, I, I gotta do atonements. I need something to do on my turn. Um, but the horror level increased by two, one, two. Because there's three birds in my spot. Uh, which is their dark power. Okay. Man, funny how that worked out, huh? <laughs> All right, so now that we're done with that, the birds are going to attack. Uh, they're just gonna attack me, which I will play the Retaliate right now. Oh, sorry, these cards all unlock. Let's see, this is Improvise. Let's focus and stuff. Walk all the way over there. So I'm gonna play Retaliate right now to block the birds. Uh, I'm gonna roll my two dice. I'm still at the horror level of two because I'm at a five horror level. So hopefully I get a swing on the birds. All right, cool. So I got one success and one fail. So that means that I reduce the damage by two. Uh, and then I deal one damage to the birds. So I reduce all the damage by two and I deal one damage to the birds, which is great because that means I'm not going to increase the horror level. So I kill one bird. And they, um, I take one damage total. All right, I haven't lost a lot of health. I've noticed that. I've just not lost a lot of health so far. All right, and that was my retaliate. So it's been played this round, so it stays up there. And then next up is going to be... Oh, no. This is this and this. Sorry. Uh, next up for me is going to be to play... Or spawn birds. So now we spawn birds. Two and four. That's manageable. Four is the nearest exit, which is where I am. Two is any single space. So I can do four birds in any single space, or I can do two birds where I am. I think I'll do four birds any single space, because that's a little bit more manageable. It's becoming untenable over there, though. Like, it's becoming really bad over there. So I'll do four birds here. So it's going to be... Actually, I'll do four birds here. So it's going to be one, two, three, four... Mm, how about one, two, three, four. Let's do that. So... One, two, then three, and then four. So it's becoming much scarier over there. Like, I really need to go deal with that, but I don't tell y'all. I don't tell y'all. <laughs> all right, so that's all the birds spawning. Now we go over to the next card, which is going to be uh, the Fickleness of the Gods. It says, uh, place this card next to the Divine Wrath card. At the end of the upkeep phase, make a horror roll. Two successes decrease uh, the Divine Wrath by one. One success, no effect. Zero successes unleash Divine Wrath uh, and increase by number of victims in spaces. All right. 
So I get to put this next to this board. This is... Oh, this is forever. So I may spend uh, three time during the action phase to discard this card. Uh, I will spend three time during my action phase to discard that card. I have no reason to keep that card on the board. Like, that card is really bad. Um, yes, I'm going to spend three time, but all I'm doing this turn anyway is just atonement. Because I have no cards left. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to spend three time. Like, I, there's no reason for me not... Oh, first, let me, let me do this atonement roll. Um, so, this card is in play. And we're going to my next action phase, now that all the birds have done their thing. And we're going to rule. This is atonement. Um, I have... That's a zero success. So I increase the horror by one and lose two time. <laughs> all right, sure. And, uh, lose two time, decrease the horror by one. And now I'm going to spend um, three time. Actually, hmm. You know, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Let me leave that card in for one round. Um, I, originally I was gonna do it because I was hoping I get at least one atonement to reduce the uh, stuff by one. But now that I'm thinking about it, if, I, if we unleash Divine Wrath right now, uh, actually, if we unleash Divine Wrath right now, I'm actually going to lose a lot of cards. Eh, it's it's kind of neat here and there. Let's let's go with it. let's go with it. Let's see what story it tells. I'm I'm into the story at this point. Like I've 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 accepted the fact that I'm going to lose this game. So uh, we're going over into my uh, my phase, my planning phase. So we're zooming out. Um, I got all my cards back. So one, two, three, four, five, six cards. I got uh, four time to spend. I will use that four time to take uh, I think I'll use that four time to take a mm, I'll take two sprints because I really need to get moving oh birds are gonna attack me um, I will take a guard and a sprint oh, oh I lied I'll take a guard and two close calls that way, if Divine Wrath strikes, it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it gets reduced it all the way down to 2, which would be nice. Or 1, which would be nice. Alright, so let's see. What, what is the fate of me? Um, <laughs> I am done with all that. Reset this back here. These cards are now available again. Yep, retaliate there. And let's see. We're going to zoom back in for the burbs. And for this one, the birds are going to do their thing. They've actually not killed a ton of people. Now that I said that, I've jinxed it, but still, they haven't. Um, first thing is, uh, oh, during the upkeep phase. Sorry, what was it say? Oh, sorry, I had to do that last round. Okay, so that should have already happened. So that should have happened already. During the upkeep, it says during the upkeep, or at the end of the upkeep phase, do that. So that should have happened on that first round that showed up. Uh, so we got no successes. Uh, so we had no successes. I had, I had no cards. Did I have no cards? Hold on, let me think. I think I had an atonement. That was it. And my atonement was not successful. Uh, so if anything, I think we just unleashed divine wrath, which I am, I discard no cards. Uh, so that means that that doesn't drop. So nothing nothing happened last round. Um, actually, sorry, I lied. I dropped this by one. And my atonement roll didn't happen, which means that the horror level is back where it was. Okay, all right. Just gotta, gotta pay attention to these trigger attacks, y'all. It's, it's a lot to maintain, especially when you're playing solo, because nobody's there to remind you except for yourself. Anyway, moving on. Um, what was this roll for? I don't know what this roll is for. Oh, I rolled this too. Oh, this is bird spawn. Okay, got it. Sure, bird spawn. Uh, four and one. So I can do... Four and one is basically uh, four birds in one space, or distributed in any spaces, or one bird in the nearest exit. That's unfortunate that they keep trying to attack me. Oh, birds didn't attack, did they? Wait, okay, okay, all right, hold on. <laughs> let's, let's take a step back, because I'm obviously out of phase here. So, I've, I'm done with my turn, I bought my cards, the birds are going to attack. Let's do that first. I think this roll is supposed to be the birds attacking, but I don't remember, because I forgot the other roll. So if I did, my apologies, we're retconning it because the game's random enough, right? Not like I'm doing great. So I got one success with my guard, because I'm playing a guard with the birds attacking, more specifically. Let me 
very specific. So I get to reduce the damage by two, which is enough to block all of them. So I'll just let that be what it is. All right, cool. Now that's happened, the birds are going to spawn. Bird spawning. Uh, four and five. So I can spawn four birds. I can spawn four birds at the nearest victim space, or I can spawn five birds at the nearest exit. They really like being near me. So nearest victim space is one, two, right there. So I can spawn four birds there, which is a nightmare. But we'll do it. Clears up some space. So this is one, two, and then uh, I'll do three and four. So three and four. All right, it's beginning to look a lot like murder. And now that all is done with the bird spawn, we do the next card on the terror deck. And this one says, it feels hopeless. We increase the terror by two, or increase the horror level by two. So one, two, so we're now in the red area. And uh, if there's at least one special victim in play, spawn birds, which there's no special victims, but we're now at the point where I'm rolling one dice total because I have not been able to manage at all the horror level because of all the horrible things that have been happening. But at least I kept my cards. So that's fine. All right, now we're into the next round uh, with me starting my action phase. Oh, sorry, we're at the end of upkeep. So we're gonna roll these two dice for end of upkeep. And, uh, oh, you know what? I haven't been, I have not been triggering a failure of the gods, which is fine because the failure of the gods card says, if I fail completely, then increase the divine wrath by one. Um, I guess it'll be at 10 still from previous because I rolled a zero. Sure. Uh, so for this one, I can discard cards to make those successes. If I discard four, oh, actually, let me spend one close call. I'll spend two time, one, two, to reroll both of these. All right, we got one success, nothing happens. Okay, cool. All right, I'm okay with that. Now we go over to my turn. And I really need to get moving on all this stuff because this is getting really bad, really fast. It's been bad for a while, but it, it's, it's like it just sank in that it was really bad. So I'm rolling one dice total. Oh, shoot. Ah, sorry, this is make a horror roll. So that last thing that happened didn't happen. Um, I got one roll. So I roll once for initially, which is success, but I'll still call that spent for the close call because um, I'm only rolling one dice for my horror roll. It says roll your horror roll dice. Yeah, not roll two dice, okay. But I'm rolling one dice total, so I'm definitely going to, oof. I'm gonna focus, I'm gonna try to focus. So focus is a card that I have not played yet. It's one that I usually try to play early, but I had, I mean, I had a chance to, but I didn't. Uh, and then, you know, the divine wrath struck and everything, so I roll one dice. So it was a partial success. I can discard two cards and make it a full success. I will discard a short rest and a and a focus. Short rest and focus will be discarded. So I can increase the horror, or sorry, decrease the horror track by one. So I now have two dice to roll. Um, I will now walk, or try to walk. Hopefully I don't trip, but I might. Oh, and I lose one, um, so I lose one of those. Actually, sorry, okay. So I'm at six time, um, I spend, so I was at four time because I spent two to reroll all the dice last time, but I only had one dice left. So that means I always had to spend one. So I will be at six, dropping by one to five. It's a lot, a lot, of, a lot of bookkeeping, y'all. Uh, um, so I lose one time for this. So I'm down to four officially now. And now I'm gonna try to walk. There we go, I got two dice. Can I walk? Can I walk? The game says no. <laughs> uh, I will discard a close call and I will spend two time to reroll all the dice. One, two. We're getting to the point where I really need to get moving because like, like we're, we're very far away from the end. Very far away from a victory, I should say. That's even worse. Oh no, that's a complete failure. So increase the divine wrath by one. Um, I failed completely, which means that I lose two time or I can lose one health and two time to move one space. Um, I don't know if it's gonna do much if I move one space. So I'm just gonna chill out where I am and lose two time, one, two. 
And now I will do a weak attack with my two dice and pray that I hit something. So pray to the old gods, not the new ones. Woo! Two successes! Where was that last turn? <laughs> Um, so two successes gives me one shot. Um, I have the old rifle still, so I can shoot birds that are far away. Um, I think I will definitely shoot this bird. So it kills one bird. Slowly picking off birds. Not not at a fast pace at all. Like, very slow. Obviously, I should have been more aggressive. I should have gotten some more attacks earlier. But um, we're just going to continue playing this out since we're already here. Uh, so now that's done. Uh, weak attack is done. I am not going to play my walk. I'm going to hold on to it uh, and hope I hold on to it, I should say, because if Divine Rash strikes, I'm not going to get it anyway. I have zero time to spend during the next uh, planning phase. So because I have zero time to spend, I don't have to, I can't buy anything. There's no zeros down here because all of them have been played recently. Uh, yeah, so that's disappointing. All this come back. So zeros, ones, zero, 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 one. It's looking hopeless, y'all. It's looking hopeless. Got my walk in my hand. All right. So now we attack with the birds. The birds are going to attack me for two, and I'm just going to take the damage because I have nothing to block it. So I'm down to two health. And now that that's happened, I am going to... Spawn birds. Oh, uh, it's birds with three. Nothing, n uh, nothing, okay. Why do I keep rolling well on the bird spawn? I don't understand. So six and five, ugh, man. Uh, a five is the nearest victim space and a six is my space. I will spawn five birds in my space. Um, actually, mm. Because Nier's victim space is going to put the victims at risk again. Although them dying... You know what? I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll do six birds here. Because that's all I got. So this is bird one. And then uh, bird two. And then bird three, four, five. And then one more bird. Bird six. That is looking really bad. <laughs> All right, so now we move on to the next part, which is we're drawing another tarot card. So this tarot card is Punishment of the Gods, Unleash Divine Wrath, which is fine. I only got one card in my hand, so sure. Uh, Unleash Divine Wrath, so reduce Divine Wrath by one. Oh, that's not good. And then Unleash Divine Wrath again, uh, which is going to do one, and then this has a go, so two, uh, back here. So we do this twice, so we do it once to, because it's reducing the horror by two. Or increasing the horror by two and then once again is going to increase the bloodlust for the birds which is going to do it again which is going to trigger this which is going to discard the top terror card from the game means that it gets a little bit closer to the birds being murderous and then uh we're going to unleash divine wrath again so we're going to discard the last two. Oh no one two and uh, so I lost four time for that and then I lose four more time. So one, two, three. So do I just not get a next turn? I don't get a next turn, y'all. <laughs> Cause, uh, that's at the lose next turn. Uh, yeah. So that's, uh, that. Oh, oh. And then the, um, the birds are going to attack where they activate. So they're going to kill one person here, which they kill one person here, which is going to increase the terror by one. Uh, which is going to discard another card from the terror deck for the birds. Which there is no more. Oh, sorry. The um, finale is revealed. So finale is revealed, which is foul aggression. It says, uh, for the remainder of the game, when spawning birds, roll one die and place that many birds in your space. That's not good. But it doesn't matter. I think I'm dead anyway. Um, it says one victim was killed here. And then... Uh, I will be attacked twice, which means I'm actually on my last foot anyway. So I'll be attacked twice. So this is one. And so let me scooch this over. So that's one health left. And this is the last one. And I'm completely dead. There we go. It's all over. <laughs> that's all she wrote. <laughs> I, um, I did not make it versus the birds. The birds were very, very compelling with their arguments. And I think that I just agree that the birds are just, just too good to deal with, you know? <laughs> too good to deal with.
<laughs> no, no, no. <clears throat> yeah, so in retrospect, I think that the turn that I took a double distraction, because <clears throat> I was thinking about doing Atonement, and I was like, yeah, maybe I should do an Atonement or two, because I feel like it's a little bit high on the Divine Wrath track. But there's an argument that can be made that I should have taken double Atonement and then uh, two close calls so I can go work on reducing Divine Wrath. Although Divine Ra reducing Divine Wrath is, like feels really bad with Atonement. Like this is this is one of those like mechanically speaking, it's like it's kind of gimmicky and like if you can figure it out, it works. But given that um, that we have so many uh, initiate Divine Wrath cards with the Fire and Brimstone, with all of these victims stuck there, and with me stuck here because I, I couldn't move because Divine Wrath sapped all my cards and I was just stuck there. It basically kind of kind of bought about the uh, end of times. Um, basically, that the, also that other card of um, Fire and Brimstone, the fact that it spawns, it spawns two victims. Oh no, sorry, I lied. Not that one. Which one? Which one spawned? Oh, there was a there was a horror card. Yeah, there we go. This this was very unfortunate. Like I thought it was I thought I was doing something when I thought it was great when um, when the I thought it was great when Hollow Ground rolled to be so close to me. So when this card rolled to be the Holy Groves, I was like, oh, that's great. That's great. I wanted the Holy Groves. That's great. And then this card shows up and says, actually, no, that's the worst thing you can actually want, Cool Blue. Uh, and I was like, oh, and you're totally right. That's the worst thing I could ever want. Because uh, that spawned two new... So it unleashed Divine Wrath. Or sorry, increased Divine Wrath by people at Holy Spaces, which maxed it out to 10. And then uh, unleashed Divine Wrath, which lost all my cards. And then placed two new victims at the Holy Groves. And then all victims adjacent to Holy Girls moves towards it. And it's like, it just ended up with four people there. So we're at a situation to where I'm now in peril and it was all bad. Actually, now think about it. I don't think, I don't think Unleash and Divine Wrath did anything besides reduce two time. Now I'm thinking about it. But it was bad. Obviously it was bad. I mean, I'm dead as a, as a character in the game. So I didn't make it. She didn't make it. She didn't make it, boss. All right. Okay. So that's it for the game. Uh, hopefully this is a very informative walkthrough of the game. Um, like I said, the birds, the birds are four for four. Um, I am zero for four when the birds and, uh, one day I will beat the birds, but today is obviously not that day. Today is obviously not that day. Uh, so hope you all enjoyed the walkthrough. Hope you all enjoyed watching me play this game. Um, I do recommend this game. I think it's very fun as far as a solo game. Um, I do think it's a game that you have to go into just assuming that you're just going to have a good time. Like just assume that you're going to enjoy the story. If you go in saying, I'm going to win this game or I'm going to figure out the puzzle, you're going to have a bad time because this game does does deal with dice in a very rough way. Uh, there, there's some heavy penalties for dice being not that great. And uh, because of that, like if you take this game as a, I'm going to compete and try to beat everything with everybody everywhere, you're, you're going to be playing the game for a long time, which is cool. But I don't know if you'll be playing for reasons of, I'm having fun. It'll be more of reasons of, well, you just can't win the way that you think you're going to win. Also, as another note, uh, this game reminds me a lot of arcade games back in the days, which, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, when I say back in the days, I mean back in the days, is before my time. But uh, arcade games used to be really, 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 really hard because the goal of arcade games back in those days was to get you spending as many quarters as possible. So if you put a quarter into the machine to play Pac-Man and then the ghost kicked your butt, especially at level two or level four, then you put another quarter in and you keep playing. You put another quarter and you keep playing. So the goal is to be as difficult as possible to get you to put quarters in. Um, I feel like that's what this game excels at is that, you know, get you to keep putting quarters in and keep playing. But I don't know how compelling that is for a board game that I've already paid for that I own and then I get to sit down and play. Um, once again, not, not, not necessarily saying that this is an awful thing you should avoid, but it's definitely uh, some food for thought because uh, the difficulty, I feel, I feel like there's still a difficulty ramping issue. Maybe it's just me versus the birds. I don't know. Uh, the birds, I'm like I said, I'm 4 0 for the birds, so I obviously haven't figured it out. I'm sorry, I'm 0 4 for the birds, so I obviously have not figured it out. Um, but even going against some of the other villains, like Geppetto was giving me a headache for a while until I figured out his formula. Um, Hans, Hans was always straightforward and easy to figure out. Um, so maybe just a little bit more puzzling together, maybe being a little bit more risky with my movements, maybe taking a turn to where I have four time instead of buying a bunch of cards, just buying that one card that might help me out later. Like uh, for instance, one of my first games that I played when I was playing incorrectly, um, I bought Figure Strike really early and I did not use it until the very end. But the idea being I could hold on to it and I did not have to spend that money later when the opportunity came up to attack the villain. So that, that kind of strategy, that kind of approach could have worked. Um, I think I should have invested more in the atonement for sure. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll 
definitely trying to do more of a movement focused thing but the problem is like with one or two failed um, rolls on movements then you end up in a, as a sitting duck so not only is the divine wrath track out of control now but also i now have spent all my money on movement that have, has all failed me um yeah cool i got an old rifle which worked out but it only i can only attack once every two rounds so that, that was not a good investment. I should have definitely tried to go for Aluminum Bat instead. And then that would encourage me to get some more of the other fighting cards and kill more birds. Bird Wall was inconsequential. Um, it ended up not being a big factor because it's like, well, I'm not escaping anybody anyway. So, <laughs> so yeah. All right, cool. So, so that's enough of me kind of, uh, kind of reflecting and reminiscing on the game. Uh, we'll definitely leave it there. Hopefully you all enjoy the game. Um, yes, I was incorrect on a few rules here or there, but I did try to correct them as I noticed them. Um, which was another thing with solo games. Is sometimes you play incorrectly and you don't know that you played incorrectly. But even with the benefits, with air quotes, that I might have gotten from playing incorrectly, you can see that the game is very much tuned to make sure that I put another quarter in the machine. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So that's going to be it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, please let me know what you think of the game. And um, as always, I will see you all whenever.